the mind is is abstract it's expansive the mind is not in the body the mind isn't even the brain I mean, there's there's all kinds of associations that the deceived mind is made you know a thinking about the brain is where thinking takes place but the brain is just following it's getting these impulses and it's it's getting directions from the mind <laughs> so where is the mind <laughs> the mind is just this vast powerful unlimited thing and the body is like a teaching learning device it just follows orders from the mind so that literally when we perceive problems as being you know someone did something to me or um, what do I got to do next you know it's we're still looking down looking at the body in a sense like the body is autonomous and like um, it can make decisions on its own it can think it can do things it can feel things in psychology I, I learned in physiology you know that the body has instincts you know the reflex instincts and and hunger and thirst and for warmth and sexual drives and everything you know I learned that the body had instincts and I get to page 52 of the course okay get an opportunity to, to unlearn that that, that Jesus the master psychologist you know in the 52 of the old text says that, that these body appetites are not in the body at all that the ego is literally working through the body to gratify itself it's like okay now I've, I've got to get back into my mind where the ego is <laughs> this thing is is mis is miscreating and, and is using the world for its purposes to have, to keep me bound in time then I've got to find out about how this ego works I've got to find out about its thought system so I can disidentify from it or I can withdraw my investment in it so really the key question is always what is it for because there in the mind there is this thing called purpose the ego has a purpose and it's very bent on its purpose it wants to reinforce the separation as being real and it will use everything in the world including the body to reinforce the belief that the world is real and that the separation has happened and the Holy Spirit's only purpose is forgiveness the Holy Spirit's purpose is to, to look on all things to withdraw the attachment and the judgments of the world and so really when you the deeper you go in the course you start to get this thing of like that question what is it for it starts to come up more and more and more what is it for when, I, when I'm making this phone call to this friend now Jesus has a, in the workbook says um, at the superficial levels you do think you understand purpose you really think that when you're making a phone call that you're trying to reach another person or another body that's not in the proximity you know it's like I know what a phone's for but he says then he, you know it's like okay then the next line is he says but there is no purpose at these levels it's like oh you know, <laughs> it's just once again I do not know what anything is for those kind of ideas that, that we we think we know what things how things work in this world and what they're for he says you really don't know what you want to reach him for see how he shifts from a phone is, is an object that you use to reach somebody who's not in your proximity which is at the form level and then he says the real question is what do you want to reach him for you know that's that's a purpose thing that, that like brings it back um, the mind has has fragmented the world you know it's like when we go to work we have a concept of us being like a worker and we have certain job duties to do these are concepts and constructs you know sometimes the dilemma comes up well my boss says I need to do this and I don't know how I feel about this I think this might be unethical or or something you know but but the mind has all these constructs and and what a good worker is what it means to be a man what it means to be a woman what it means to be an American what it means to be a member of Unity Church I mean it just goes the mind's got this storehouse of, of things in there of of constructs that tell it tell it what the world means when I go to the grocery store you know the, there's a there's a grocery store scenario tucked away 
file number 1089 grocery store scenario you go into a grocery store depending on your preferences you know cost that's got a high preference you know find the bargains or freshness or health you know we've got nutrition laws in there you know let's go through and let's health is a big thing you know finding the most nutrition low cholesterol all this stuff is fed into the computer maybe it's time my time is precious. I've got to get in and out of this grocery store tonight by 45 minutes. So that's my constraint. But anyway, it's this grocery store scenario in there. All the Course is saying is, there's going to be these wonderful holy encounters that you're going to have. And each person you meet in that grocery store <laughs> gives you opportunity for salvation. You know, Instead of running up and down the aisles like I used to, <laughs> trying to get out of the store, it's like, it's like you get a sense of this purpose. There's a different purpose here. You know, I can, I can, you can look people in the eye. You can, you know, conversations get struck up. You feel a sense of connectedness. The old computer program of, in the mind of, you know, whatever it is, starts to get laid aside, and you start to feel that connection. And then you do it when you're doing your laundry, and you can do it, you know, when you're skiing or whatever. At the beginning, the Holy Spirit knows how much the mind believes in specific, separate situations. It knows, he knows <clears throat> that the, the mind believes that time is linear. I did this yesterday. After I finish this today, I'm going here next. You know, the mind's got, got like a script. It's got an imagination. It's, it's very linear. And purpose kind of gets away from that whole linear sense of time. It just, it's very abstract, too. You know, it's like, hold one purpose in mind. You know, at the beginning, it's like, what the heck is he talking about? What is this purpose? And, and we can't hold it in mind consistently because we've got all these other things and investments going on. But, but as soon as we learn to start to lay aside gradually these other scenarios and investments, then all of a sudden this purpose starts to dawn in our mind. It's like, yeah, this is what I want. There, there's this line in the Beyond All Idols section that says, um, whenever you decide upon the form of what you want, you lose the understanding of its purpose. Like, wow, and that's a deep one. I gotta, whenever I decide about the form of what I want, I lose the understanding of its purpose. Whenever I read a meaning into, into any form and, and think I know what this chair is, or, um, um, Jesus uses the example of the table in the workbook. He says, you can receive salvation from this table. You mean I don't have to deal with Aunt so-and-so? I can do it with this table? <laughs> this is pretty good. This is good news, you know? And, and he says, now withdraw all the meaning that you've given to this table, you know? You know, what, what it's for. Or he does it with a cup, too, you know? He says, when, do you really see a cup? Or are you just reviewing memories in your mind of, of how the cup feels on your lips? Or maybe of thinking of it as having coffee at breakfast in the morning. And what's the texture of the cup? And will the cup break if, you know, if, if it falls? It's like we have all this information stored away on everything in the world. And this is what makes a, ch a chair a chair, we think, and a cup a cup, and a table a table. And he's saying, there is a purpose that the Holy Spirit has for that table. And if you can get this universal pur purpose that he gives to the table and the cup and the chair and your Aunt Frida or whoever, <laughs> you know, then you've got it. But you really need to train your mind to this one abstract purpose. It's a different purpose than the, than the ego's purpose in the mind. And it's pretty, it's deep, but you know, you can just get a gr glimmer of it like, hmm, sounds like something I want to try. There's a different purpose that can be given to anything. So what are you saying the purpose is? Um, are you saying atonement, truth, miracles, forgiveness? Yeah. Lots of synonyms that he uses. It, uh, to me, he, he comes at the same thing, come with all these different words and all these different things, but, he, but there's a lot of synonyms used in the Course. In that sense, uh, it's, it's like if one thing clicks, you know, <laughs> all you have to do is just really get it clear, no matter what. For some people, the uh, educational um, words come through, you know, curriculum and learning, learning goal, you know, um, 
the real world is, is learned, and, and uh, the, holy, the holy relationship is a phenomenal learning <coughs> accomplishment. Some people like the, the educational words. Some people like the religious words, you know, atonement, or redemption, or those kind of things, salvation. Some people like the psychological words, you know. It, it's just like whatever. He's, he's just given us a tool that whatever you can relate to, and however you can get this meaning, you know, you can do it in, in, in an instant, but it just takes one perfect instant in the sense of, as we just talked about this purpose, that if we hold on to idols and investments, you can't simultaneously hold on to this purpose and those. So it's like, like a teeter-totter, you know? <laughs> it's like it all helps, but, but not to beat yourself up. Um, when you're talking about feeling sacrificed, about giving <coughs> up the pleasures or whatever, you know, that comes up a lot in the Course. But the thing is, if you look at the stages of the development of trust, you know, where it goes through the different levels, you know, and you go through, oh, yeah, and then the second one and the third one, it's like, oh, you think you've come pretty far here. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you're, but the belief in sacrifice still clouded your vision. I mean, it's like, you still, you've, you've made some advances, you know, you, things you want and you don't want and everything, but it's like you still, it's still the judgment is clouded. So obviously, it's not until the very end you know, as you really start to awaken, as you really start to let go, that, that the, you start to see the belief in sacrifice for what it is. So at the early stages, it's not uncommon at all to feel like, you know, this, that this is really a sacrifice. Because if we go back to our analogy of, of the mind, remember, of, of running from the light and, and running towards the form, to hide in the form, it's like it's sunk into the form. <laughs> you know, in a sense, you know, it's like going into quicksand and then just trying to <laughs> yank your leg out, you know. I mean, there's a pretty good grip. The, the learning of the world has got a, a, a pretty fast grip on the mind because it really believes in the concrete and the specific and the form. So to be real gentle and to, to say, okay, I'm going to go along, I'm just going to take it, I'm going to try to work with right now. I'm just going to try to watch my emotions. How do I feel right now? That takes a lot of vigilance. You know, when, when you're used to getting involved and distracted into things and, you know, before you know it, you've got a little irritation building up and, and it's a little stronger and you don't notice it until, you know, boom, you've got a rage and you're ready to explode at somebody. It, it takes a lot of vigilance and, and practice just to watch your emotions and just to see how do I feel right now. And right now, in a sense, is a lot because it's always right now. <laughs> you know, 